We're on. Okay, you're good to go, Noah. All right. So this is my STEM capstone presentation of my project, the Chopped Duino. And the thing's not working. There we go. Uh, this project is the result of the need of individuals who may require assistance to use chopsticks. I designed, prototyped, programmed, and assembled a simple Arduino-based device that is able to take user input and control a pair of chopsticks in an automated fashion. This project required me to use every field of STEM in order to produce a functioning product. To create this device, I needed to research several skills and technologies necessary for its function. This includes understanding properties of all mediums needed, those being a servo, an Arduino Pro Micro, 3D printing technologies, the Arduino B Programming IDE, C++ programming language, CAD software, and lithium-ion 18650 battery cells. Some technical terms that I'll use in this presentation include microcontroller, which is a ch computer chip that can be programmed to control things, Arduino Pro Micro and Arduinos, which an Arduino is a popular microcontroller based on the AT Mega architecture. The Pro Micro is a specific version of Arduino that is smaller with less pins. 18650 battery, which is a model of lithium ion battery com commonly found in laptops and other consumer devices. IDE, a program that takes code and translates it to a language that microcontrollers can understand and CAD software, which is programs that can make th digital 3D models. Some research I had to do beforehand to create this device um, included the research of several skills and technologies that... let me restart that. To create this device, I needed to research several skills and technologies necessary for its function. This requires the understanding of all the mediums used, those being a servo, Arduino Pro Micro, 3D printing technologies, the Arduino programming IDE, the Arduino itself, basic circuitry and switches, C++ programming language, soldering, CAD software, and lithium-ion 18650 battery cells. The procedures were performed on the base, on the formula of prototyping my design, testing it, making revisions, repeating this until that section of the project was functional, and then repeating the, all of those steps until the project was complete. This more specifically went by the process of prototyping the electronic circuit on a breadboard, revising until all the connections were functional, soldering the electronics together, designing code for the, the Arduino, uploading and testing the code in the Arduino, revising, re-uploading the code until proper functionality, using 3D Builder, my CAD software, to design and prototype the model, uh, saving the 3D model into my Cura printing software, uploading the model to a 3D printer, assembling the 3D model to observe potential changes, returning to 3D Builder to add changes to the 3D model, printing the revisions, and then I repeated those steps until the full project was successful. The materials used include a computer to run Windows 3D Builder, 3D printer, Creality Ender 3, ABS and TPU 3D printer filament, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the technical names, uh, 18650 battery cells, Arduino Pro Micros, analog switches, a breadboard, wire clips, chopsticks, a soldering iron and solder, wires, small tension spring, and a 9 gram servo. Design iterations and analysis. First I designed the circuit. Circuit design was fairly simple. However, the electronics required minor revisions to take full advantage of this design that you see in the top right. Those adaptations include the code problem that I'll cover later in the code iteration slide with interference and the servos that had to be replaced due to dysfunctions. For the 3D model, while I started with this first design on the top and was functional in concept, however, I don't know if you can tell, but the gears don't actually connect so that they, the whole mechanical aspects of this were completely useless. I made a revision down below that connected the gears and added a lever to one of the gears to better increase the connection to the servo and the gear. Here are some more pictures of that second rendition after it was 3D printed. And then for my second version of the 3D model I went for a complete redesign due to the unreliability of the gears and the size and shape of the model. So this one took advantage of both ABS and TPU filament where I used the ABS for the structure and then TPU 
for mechanical motions because of the flexible nature of TPU filament. Uh, for the code, this is the first version of the code that I used and would have been functional on a regular Arduino. However, what I wasn't expecting to experience was the Arduino Pro Micro has interference on its digital pins, which I was using to control the servo that I wasn't accounting for. This interference caused the servo to freak out or to move when I didn't want it to move and was unreliable. So I made a second rendition of the code here that would constantly reset the digital value to what I want it to be based on the state of the button so that the interference would be overwritten every time the code was run. Uh, what did I learn from this project? This project taught me several skills and expanded my knowledge base in the fields of STEM. For the science section of this project, I found that my 3D printing research taught me about material science and how manipulating different plastics alters their properties. The Arduino introduced me to new technological tools, such as microprocessors, which can be used for a multitu multitude of uses. I practiced engineering in designing the 3D model and for the project and the electrical circuitry. Additionally, the programming utilized math to a great extent by taking in user values and translating them to movement while disrupting interference. But beyond STEM, I found that this project greatly improved my ability to think critically about challenges that I encounter and how to innovate intuitive solutions to overcome them. Any questions or comments? Can we little, see it? Yeah, there's a <laughs> GIF there. If I pull it up, I have it here. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's so cool. Yep. So what do you have to press to make it make that happen? I have a little button here on the side. I don't know if you can see right there. Okay. That would activate it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So yeah. um, you have a 3D printer at home? Yes. Or did you have to do this? That's so cool. I mm -hmm. love that. Um, yeah, yeah so... I'm not sure I understand the whole coding part of aspect <laughs> of all of it, but I'm sure you, you understand it because you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit hard to figure out, but... I understand it now. <laughs> That's awesome. So what kind of made you pick this topic? Like, was there a certain reason that you cho chose to do this? Yeah, I was just interested. I'd seen some cool videos from YouTubers who had taken Arduinos and 3D printing and other stuff to make cool projects. And I kind of just looked around and thought, you know, I have all these cool tools. Like this whole project, besides the 3D printing, was made out of recycled electronics the batteries pulled from a laptop, the switch from a microwave, the other power switch from another electronic thing I took apart. I just kind of looked at all these things I've been collecting and thought it'd be really cool to make a project with these. And I saw someone who made, um, there was a popular video a couple years back where someone had made a spoon for people with like Alzheimer's and shaky hands mm -hmm. that would stabilize the tip of the spoon, however they're holding it to help them to eat. And I thought, that's a really cool idea. I want to make my own rendition with a different take on it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. So is this something you're planning on pursuing in college? Are you hoping to do something with computers? And... Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, I think, I mean, like bioengineering, this is like just right up that alley. If you're, you know, that I know a lot of colleges, they, they actually have entire sections devoted to just you know different engineering concepts but this would fit right in with bioengineering is so cool mm -hmm. yeah um i think just maybe because i'm a chemistry teacher i have uh so the two so you use two different types of plastics right and you said one was flexible and one was more rigid yep. so how did you figure out like where to put the flexible parts and the rigid parts and i don't know can you expand on that a little bit yeah so let me Go to the slide with the picture of the design so I can expand. Um, when I was thinking of how to design it, I first I did the gears making the whole thing rigid and it was working, but I was thinking this really has no room for error. If I bumped the chopsticks, the gears would pop off, right? So I started by thinking, okay, let me fold the base over onto the top, but then I can't insert the gears um, and then the gears would get stuck on it in the CAD software. So I thought, okay. What if I scratch everything and what if I use it like my hand? 
So in my hand, if I figuratively use my fingers as chopsticks, there's not gears at each of the joints. There's skin and tendons, and they're just kind of flexing. So I thought, okay, I have flexible filament. Let me try using something that'll bend and flex like the TPU as fingers, in a sense, to hold the chopsticks. So those curved parts are made out of the flexible filament, and then the more square, like the base part, is made out of the rigid stuff? Yeah, sorry, I should have clarified that. So the two bits on the right are made out of flexible filament. The one that kind of looks like a rainbow is the one that's the finger action, and then the other one is the part that grips onto the uh, chopstick and connects it to the spring and servo. And then this other circular part is rigid because it's the battery case. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So did you uh, try it with food? I Just did. Just curious. I couldn't find a way to upload the video, but I took it to McDonald's and ate a whole thing of chicken nuggets while the people at the counter were staring at me. Great. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is really great. Um, let me see if there's any other things I can Yeah, I think I really like how you explained your process and because I think that's kind of the key to having a, you know, a successful engineering project is, you know, you started with your design and then you're like, hey, wait, that's not working. The gears don't connect. I, I think mm -hmm. that's like the whole idea of the STEM projects is to just, you know, get you through that process. And I really feel like when you're pursuing this in college, just to know that you have those skills down and that you understand like, okay, I got to modify this. So now my code's not working. Now I got to change this. I think that's just really awesome. And it's great. Uh, it was a great project. Yeah. Thank you. It was hard, <laughs> but I learned a lot. <laughs> Good. That's awesome. Where are you going to go to school? Do you know? I'm not sure yet. Probably university of Utah, but I think I'm going to take a year to figure things out, especially that's with all this. <laughs> yeah. There's a, uh, there's a great program. I mean, you might want to look at some engineering schools too, because they, um, you know, like that really have a good focus. I don't know how, I'm not sure about University of Utah, if they have a good program. I, I know there's one in Northern California that, I don't know if you know Ms. Hyatt, but her son went there and he's actually in graduate school in Ireland right now for bio, biomechanical engineering. And this is kind of right up the alley of things that he's doing too. And he, I think the school is, Pacific, but not the one in Oregon. It's University of Pacific, I think mm -hmm. is the name of it. So, um, okay. Any other questions, Ms. Raz? I I don't think so. I think that was a really good project. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of glad that you had us record this because I think that you could probably uh, you could probably submit this project for lots of scholarships and stuff too. So if you haven't thought about that, uh, I would maybe just look and see if there's any scholarships out there that this project would fit the fit the, the criteria for. Yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. Especially in engineering, there's a lot of engineering yeah. is a field that not a lot of people are, I mean, I, I don't know if they're not interested or they think, oh, I can't do it because it's so much math and things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I they do offer a ton of scholarships because engineering is a field that was so important in our society right now. So I agree with that for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think I have any other questions. Mr. Ross, you good? I think, yeah, I'm good too. That was great. Cool.